Nate G 219 here to help it back and better. Y'all know what it is. Another one coming at you. First, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Donate to that channel if you want to help out, trying to get them subscribers up there. Uh, first of all, I want to thank every one of you, each and every one of you, all 489 subscribers that I do have. I am blessed that you are here with me. Thank you so much. Soon to come, I got some lives coming, but it is uh, Sunday morning, about 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm going to get a quick one at you before I go Christmas shopping. I'm sorry I had been out for a couple weeks. Between sick being sick, I had RSV, and um, it, it was a miserable one. And then uh, just between that and working a lot and Christmas shopping, everybody knows how the holidays is. And um, yesterday... Uh, I watched a video from Real Kids TV. Uh, such good t content, man. I got to give a shout out to him because him and I have been talking. And there's not just him, but a few people ready to hear the interview from uh, Cop the Con. Unfortunately, I can't give you the interview just yet. There's some behind the scenes things that have to happen prior to us doing that. So, that will be coming soon. You guys have my word on that. And if not, I, I, if not before the end of the year, it'll be shortly after the first. So, anyways, today, you know, I want to get into just jail, prison, institutions in general. Some of the people you're going to come across, some of the things you're going to experience, and... I'm going to give you those experiences as a white guy, okay? And a white guy that's not affiliated, especially. So, because I wasn't in rotation, they looked at me as a non-affiliate. I'm sorry, my daughter and, and wife are upstairs playing around. I mean, I've got a four-year-old. Many know how that is. But you're going to meet people that are the weakest you're going to meet the strongest you're going to meet the craziest you're going to meet just people from the highest and lowest walks of life that there is and that's just that's just a fact and naturally a lot of people are bullies especially in prison because they think they have to be bullies just to survive prison and I'm going to tell you a little story about a guy named Rio. Now, I was only in prison at this time. Um, I only had three months left when I hit the camp. So I was only there for a very brief time. But in that 90-day time, I saw a lot of bull, bull crap going on. A lot of um, young white kids old white men being extorted, uh, being beat up, jumped, robbed, stolen from, he turned his back, their cabinet would be ripped open, and, you know, Cash, um, Cashmere is his real name, they call him Cash, honestly, he's the biggest, loudest person, one of the biggest loudest people I had ever come across. Not big as in he's a big buff dude. No, he was fat and he was sloppy and he was disrespectful. He was arrogant. He was ignorant and broke. Uh he thought he was he was he thought he was the um biggest biggest baddest just he wasn't and I'd watched him victimize three people in one day, you know, commissary day, of course. Commissary comes in. Those that don't have money or don't see any money coming in whatsoever feel like just because this man's family has given him money or he has his own money, whatever, and he's weak, that Cash deserves that. So I watched Cash, Rio, a couple other guys walk down on him and take a shit now it wasn't he he fought his ass off for it but i mean it was like six five six against one and uh that was just 
It was a sad thing to say. And I had never once been approached about, you're going to give me this, you're going to give me that. No, I've never been approached about that. Either they knew who I was from a different camp because one of the guys in there had been in IO, ISO and in Michigan City behind the wall with me. Uh, him and I had been at the same place as prior to this, a few years prior to this, back in like 2013, 2014. But he knew I didn't play any games, so he told them not to not to mess with me. Plus, my bunkie was Mickey, um, Mickey Robinson. Shout out to you, man. I know you got your battles, but I hope all is well and all is good, man. Um, because of Mickey, they had a respect. They just didn't mess with my uh, myself or my bunk area. Now, the bunk next to me, those two guys, yeah, they were getting... They, they were just handing stuff over because they were just scared white boys. That's just the basis of it. But I'm going to tell you about a personal one with this uh, sissy named Rio. Mario something or another, but they called him Rio. Rio was about five foot four, maybe five foot five with his uh, state boots on. I mean, little... But he had the Napoleon complex going on where he thought he was the biggest, baddest MF in the in the dorm. And now we were in G dorm, which is the worst dorm in the camp, the most unsafe dorm in the camp at this point in time. Like if it's going down, it's going down in G or H, which is was right across from where I was. Yeah, there was four dorms in that in that building, and I was in G, and H was across. It got down over there, too, but not quite as much in G dorm. But another store day come in, and now Rio and Cash were brothers, okay? They were in the same, same organization, which was what I had used to be in, very active in, and... No longer was. So a lot of them knew that. I don't know if um, my dude in the corner that was that was cool with most of them, which he also didn't uh, condone the robberies. He didn't partake in it. He didn't want to soup from it. Nothing. And he just kind of laughed it off because prison is prison and you got to let people do what they're going to do. Um, regardless if you've you agree on it or not. The second you stick your nose in, the second you get smashed. But anyways, Rio one day. Now, I've, I've seen Rio at this point in time beat up at least a half a dozen, half a dozen dudes. And I got sick of seeing it. I, I'd seen him. He, he wasn't part of the robbery, but he was definitely extorting. He was making people pay him for protection and the only protection he had was a very loud voice that people listen to he had a little twist in his head real light-skinned black dude i want to say he was from kokomo indiana i'm not 100 percent sure it's irrelevant um because he and he was really the only place he's not irrelevant is behind the prison wall or prison gate fence, whatever you may call it, wherever you're at. He was behind a fence. He was in a level two. He'd never been up higher than a level two. Um, in fact, he was a few months out the door. But, but, Rio was the plug. And he had that synthetic K2 coming in by the boatload. And, and that day, it would come in sprayed on a you know, regular sized piece of paper and it would be sprayed on that and they'd cut it into strips and cut the strips up and either just smoke paper or they would uh, mix it with tea was the most common or a cigarette even if you could get, get a cigarette but a majority of the time it would be tea and I was the tea plug because I'd worked in the bakery so I always had steady 
little little steady income coming in from bringing tea bags back. I would make fudge. That, those were my little hustles and stuff like that at that camp. I only had 90 days in there. Really didn't need to do much to survive in there. Plus, I worked. So, they would spray it on that, cut it up into little pieces, and distribute it. So, I'm not going to explain how he got that paper in because... If you get a letter from somebody, they photocopy it. Obviously, you're not getting that spiked piece of paper. There are ways if you're smart enough. So, one day, Rio, I watch him. There, there was two caches in the um, dorm. One of them had the nickname of Cash. The other one's name was Kashmir. That's the loud ignorant, arrogant piece of crap I had been telling you about. He was probably about 260 of sloppy muscle, um, loud, dark, intimidating black guy for most young, scared white guys. And Rio seemed to intimidate people 10 times more than cash. And um, he... One day, I saw him hit this other dude, Cash, in the back of the head. And Cash used to talk about, oh, I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm, you know, he was hard and hanging out with them. The second I seen him hitting the back of the head, um, he cowered up like a little little sissy. But one day, I'm, I'm getting ready to use the phone. I'm in line, and Rio comes up to me. I just got back from work. And, um, okay, when the dorm cleanliness... We got a hundred and some odd guys in here. Every hundred and some odd guys is responsible for something, keeping something clean besides your area. Taking turns, mopping, whatever it may be. Everybody needs to take turns and do their part. So one day Rhea goes, well, I ain't never seen you clean the dorm, which in fact I did. I usually got, I cleaned the dorm before I got up for work. Uh, I would clean mop the bathrooms was usually what I did, or the day room. I'd do that 20 minutes and be out of there. And I said, well, that's because you're sleeping, you know, yada, yada, yada. And he didn't want to hear that. He's like, are you trying to get smart with me? I said, no, I'm just telling you facts, bro. I ain't your bro. And he poked me, and I poked him back, and I said, don't ever poke me. Well, I, I should have known better than to poke him that hard anyways, or poke him, period because I knew it was going to commence into a fight. I already, when the second he poked me, I should have just swung on him. But it didn't happen like that. But I poked him, and he swung, and like I said, he was five foot four with them boots on. I ducked it, but he hit the top of my head. Didn't phase me one bit. Didn't phase me one bit. And I came through with a cross, upper, upper right cross, and him dead in his chin, and he, and then I, I grabbed onto a uh, jumpsuit, kind of twisted, and just two, three, four, and I got grabbed by four or five guys, and push, push me back, push me back, and push him back, and you know, at this point in time, he's wanting to jump on me. Now, one of the bigger homies, one of the guys that knew who I was. Knew I was affiliated. I just was not active. Come in, break it up. Now, this guy's even smaller than... Shout out to UT. This guy's even smaller, shorter than Rio. And this guy is probably 104 pounds soaking wet. But, man, he's such a great dude. And he honestly saved my ass that day. He, uh, I was getting to get jumped. I was going to get jumped by every GD in the door. They were going to jump me because I put my hands back on Rio and got the better of him. But Rio, Rio wanted a fade. I was okay with a fade. And uh, T came over there, wouldn't sanction the fade, wouldn't let, allow the fade. He said, no, Nate's going home in a week and a half. You're going home in less than 90 days. You go y'all on some stupid shit. And asked what happened. Rio was honest. He said, I poked Nate. Nate poked me back. I swung and we got the scuffle. And he goes, why would you poke Nate? He's like, well, I didn't, 
I never see him mopping and stuff. And I was telling him he's about to mop the dorm. He, he goes, no, hold up. He goes, Nate sweeps and mops at least three times a week. Oh, I don't ever see him. He goes, that sounds like a personal problem. And ended up dead in the situation. Now, now, did I ever trust Rio again? Not first. I never trusted Rio prior to that. But I never allowed Rio to get behind me. But shortly after Christmas, right before I left, Rio come up to me and handed me, which was probably an equivalence to $250 worth of tobacco. He gave it to me. He goes, first of all, I want to apologize to you. Like, we had a little talk. We sat there for about 15, 20 minutes. He apologized to me. I apologized to him. You know, we're men. We can apologize. That doesn't make you weak. But that's just to show you. Um, uh, disagreements can be settled with words, even, even in a prison environment. A majority of the times, it's not. Because even though... I won that first little battle, the real battle was about to begin, and I was not going to win. I was going to be lucky to not get stabbed. Now, I can say there wasn't many knives or contraband like that. The, the contraband consisted of tobacco, K2, Suboxone, heroin, coke, or meth. I actually honestly know now that I think about it, I have only seen cocaine once behind prison walls, and that was in Michigan City, but, um, and that was crack, but meth, heroin, things like that. People don't have cell phones there. I never saw a single cell phone while I was in that camp. I'm not saying that they're not there. They were not in my dorm. I'd have heard of at least one. You just couldn't get away with it. But hey, guys. Please hit that like, hit that subscribe, share, share the video. Get these subscribers up. Also up is my cash app if you want to help out. Hey guys, never forget life's choices. And you know, if they ain't hating it, you ain't making it.